All right, so today you get my full review of the Prusa i3 Mark II S. So about a couple weeks ago, I got my, my fully assembled Prusa in the mail. Um, I printed with it for a few days, and I was getting great results, and then... I had a little issue with it. Um, I started to print before I went off to work, and I didn't. I didn't follow the instructions. It said watch the first few layers, make sure everything goes down nice and smooth. You know, it should take a couple minutes, depending on the size of the print you're doing. I did not listen. I walked away. I ended up with a blob. This blob. Went up around my thermistor, destroyed it, needed to replace it. You know, I did all that and everything was fine. So, my first thing about this printer, follow the instructions in the manual. It's an easy to follow manual. It tells you how to set it up, how to do all sorts of things. So, just, just read it. Don't be like me. Don't be like me and just kind of do things. Because you will regret it in the long run. Um... But what I can say is it this machine puts out high quality prints. Um, uh, before this, I had a M3D Micro, and it it put out I thought was good prints. It was my first experience with 3D printing, and I thought I it was doing pretty good until I saw this machine. Um, I got a couple examples here. Uh, I've been printing out I've been printing out dungeon terrain. Uh, these are uh, some dungeon tiles from uh, that I, I was a part of a Kickstarter for. Um, I will be doing a full review on the whole system at some point, so keep an eye out. But this was this one here is one of the forest tiles. Um, just nice. Uh, I still need to remove some of the support material in this one, but this took uh, just a few hours. Came out great. Uh, here's one I've already kind of started painting. This is the dungeon tile part. Um, sorry if a lot of what I've already printed is, uh, Dungeons and Dragons related, but I wanted to get the parts up and ready for my, my game, which I'm running this next weekend. So, uh, I just had to get a bunch of that printed out so I could be ready for that. Um, some other things here. Here's a real nice one. It's, a uh, a tree print done at, I believe this was, is either 1 or 1.5, uh, there, nice, high quality, there's a tiny bit of stringing, might be hard, I don't know if it'll focus, uh, there's a tiny bit of stringing right there at the ends, but, um, it came out great, I've been looking for a high quality little tree model for a long time, um, Here's another thing I was printing for my game. Uh, the supports, the built-in supports were really easy to remove. Um, just super easy cleanup. Um, and those, all of what I've shown you so far has all been printed in PLA. Um, a combination of the, the PLA that came, the silver PLA that came with the Prusa and a, um, Let's see, what was the other one? 3D Solutech uh, Silver PLA. Um, but then, I, you know, after I had that issue with the thermistor, I realized I should probably have spare parts on hand just in case. Because uh, quite a few parts on the machine are printed. So, if I don't print them out before the printer breaks, then I don't have a way to print out the pieces to replace them. So I'd have to buy them from someone or find someone that can help make them for me. Uh, so that's what I've been working on now. This is using a uh, an orange PLA. It doesn't quite match, um, but it is it is great. It took me a little bit to kind of tune in the uh, working with ABS. Um, I know why most people don't like to work with it nowadays. It's uh, 
it's just difficult. PLA is so much easier. Um, so after I finish with this role, uh, in the future, I think I'm probably going to, if I need more high heat applications, I'll probably stick with something like a PETG or, uh, um, there's some high temperature PLAs out there that I might work with. Um, a couple more pictures or a couple more samples here. Just beautifully smooth first layer. Um, it's just great parts. Uh, and that was uh, a Sun Lu uh, filament in, uh, let's see the color. They call it orange. Just orange. But um, I, I mean, maybe maybe I'll get a couple more PL, or ABSs just to try it out at some point. See if maybe this was a quality uh, or not. But I don't know. This is a fantastic machine. I do have plans on some upgrades to do here in the near future. Um, some of them are not directly to the machine. One thing I want is um, I'm going to, I printed this uh, camera. This it attaches to the bed here. Um, and then I'm going to put my webcam on that little post. Um, so I can monitor my prints when I'm gone. Because if, if I had that capability, maybe my thermistor wouldn't have broken. So, um, I'm going to attach this. And then I'm also going to be working. Uh, and I'm going to also have a mount for a Raspberry Pi to go on the machine. Um, I'm deciding still on between Octopi and Astro, Astro Print. I've had experience with Octopi. Um, it is not the most beginner friendly. I am not, um, my coding skills and my, just my general knowledge of Linux is very limited. And even following the directions online, I had a hard time. Mind you, that was trying to install it on a Windows machine, not a Raspberry Pi. But it's just still a very difficult thing. Uh, from my understanding, AstroPrint is very, it's a lot easier to use. Um, it does lack in some features you might have available in OctoPi, but, uh, in OctoPrint, but I don't know. I'm going to play with both of them. I'm going to be picking up a Raspberry Pi so I can monitor my prints and maybe stop them if, you know, they're having a problem while I'm gone. Um, I don't know what else to say. Um. Some issues I do I do have trouble getting the, I you know the ABS to stick at every layer and tuning I've had difficulty tuning in that first layer after um, after I place that thermistor um, can't uh, it is definitely it is a noisy machine I plan on um, there's all these dampening feet available online but I feel like you know, I've, I've, I've heard some bad things and I think the simplest thing is actually just, I'm going to get a concrete block to go right underneath it. And that, from what I hear, takes away most of the noise and that's not an issue anymore. Um, but really I can, I can't recommend this machine more. Um, either as a kit or assembled, it's, it's well worth the price. It does have a long wait. I believe it's seven weeks for the kit and 10 weeks 10 to 12 weeks for the fully assembled but i also believe that they just moved into brand new headquarters um much bigger so i'm assuming that here in the next few weeks production is going to ramp up even more um to help meet the demand that they're having on these printers so uh, hopefully those numbers will change here real soon but yeah just i love this machine that's all i can say um, so if you guys like what you see, I'm going to have dis uh, links down in the description to the Prusa site and to the, uh, and to some of the models that I printed. Um, and then, you know, if you like what you saw, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, you can also find me down in the description, all the other sites that I'm at, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon. Uh, any money that I get from anyone just goes right back into this channel. I want it to grow. I want to be able to do
do more reviews on printers. I want to do filament reviews, models. I want to other technology that fits in the 3D printing world or other things, you know, whatever it has to do with this channel, anything you can consider geeky, I want to be a part of it. Um, so I want to thank you for anyone who, you know, even just lets the ads play at the beginning. Uh, that's a big help. I've, I've to racked in a total of seven cents this month. Uh, so it's a start. And I want to say thank you for everyone who helped make that seven cents possible. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys again sometime in the near future. All right. See ya.